Okay, very good morning to you. It is Monday, 22nd of November. Hope you are doing well. And as per usual, I'm going to get up to speed on some of the major headlines from the weekend. And we're going to talk about the week ahead in particular. It's a holiday shortened week because we've got Thanksgiving on Thursday in the States, which means it's a uh, market holiday. And that means then Friday normally is a shortened trading session as well. So a lot of the economic data from the US is concentrated on Wednesday, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Uh, but let's have a look at the charts to start with and have a look at the overall sentiment for this morning. And uh, equity index futures continue to reside up at and around these record levels that we saw at the close of uh, last week. So despite kind of a pivot to some slightly more hawkish commentary coming out of a variety of Federal Reserve officials, the fact that we had some decent data and as well we had some strong uh, retailers come out with some positive earnings updates uh, they helped bump us up there. The question mark remains then um, further catalysts likely to come, uh, as I said, on Wednesday, whether or not we can stay at these elevated levels. Otherwise, as far as this morning is concerned, we do have a slightly firmer dollar up around just over one tenth of one percent. So it's weighing just a little bit on the major pairs. Cable relatively unchanged on the session, but euro dollar is down about 16 pips, perhaps explainable the slight underperformance in the euro on one of the stories we'll talk about um, in a moment, which is COVID-19 and the response turning more violent for protests across Europe um, to more onerous lockdowns because of the COVID case spikes we're seeing at the moment across the mainland. Uh, so euro dollar is down about 16 to 20 pips, albeit it has stabilized a little bit from APAC lows. Um, and then elsewhere, T-notes and gold lower amid the moderate dollar strength. Uh, so US yields a little bit firmer, the 10-year down 8.5 ticks, gold down 6 bucks. Oil's pretty much unchanged, trading us uh, close to a $76 handle. And that's pretty much the flavor of the morning. Um, but getting straight into it then, so as you can see here, and as per the headline in the FT, Europe's protests against COVID-19 curbs spread to Brussels, on Sunday, with tens of thousands of demonstrators marched through the city in protests that later turned a little bit more violent. Uh, demonstrations followed the second night of rioting in the Netherlands on Saturday over the reintroduction of coronavirus restrictions, and protests also broke out, uh, as you can imagine, in Austria, which starts its national lockdown for the next 20 days for everyone as of today. Um, we also saw protests as well happening in Italy and Croatia over the weekend. Um, so, yeah, for sure, this, uh, I guess, a necessary measure, given the um, government's decisions following the cases that we've been seeing. You can see here, looking at daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases, if you're looking at a seven-day rolling average, um, Austria way up there, followed by the Netherlands, then Ireland. So just scrolling through these at the top, Netherlands, Ireland, then you get to Greece. Uh, UK and then Germany, which has been accelerating to its highest levels since the actual outbreak of the, the pandemic in itself since the beginning of March of 2020. France, Portugal also seeing upticks, probably the latter. Um, the, the height of the incline is a little lower, just given a much higher um, vaccination take up than, say, for example, Germany, which currently resides under 70% at the moment. Um, so yeah, that was that was all over the weekend, uh, and certainly warrants monitoring further going forward. Uh, and as per what we've seen in the last week or two, uh, explains and underpins all of that rationale of that policy divergence with the likes of the Fed and the Bank of England getting more hawkish, the ECB remaining static because of these aforementioned reasons, and inflation not being as hot in those other areas as well, meaning that the euros had a bit of a rough ride of late against the US dollar. Um, before I go on to the other stories, um, just a reminder, don't forget you can access the content hub um, on amplifyme.com, specifically aimed if you're a, a student, um, so whether you're at college, university or a graduate and you're looking to break into finance, this hub has kind of everything you need from market analysis to career sessions and of course an opportunity to get involved in our latest technology simulation uh, as a sales trader market maker and an asset manager so you can just book on to the finance accelerator so you can access the hub just go to amplifyme.com and also when you're on there you can scroll to the bottom and if you want to get my daily newsletter kind of deconstructing a major market event each day then you can just pop your email in there as well um, but going back to other headlines in the weekend the bank of england um, this is of course is the governor andrew bailey who's been quite criticized as we know 
because of his perceived poor communication to the market on the back of the um, non-delivery of a rate hike, uh, despite a, a lack of pushback from him at the beginning of the month. So the latest here from the governor is that UK economic activity is slowing and supply-side issues are stoking prices underlying the two-side debate over inflation. Uh, the proximate cause of many of these inflation issues is the supply side and monetary policy isn't going to solve those directly. Um, again, I don't think that's uh, economically the, what he's saying there, I think makes a lot of, makes complete sense. Something that Piers and I have talked about in the podcast before, these are supply side based issues that are really promoting the inflationary pressures. Doesn't go really a great deal of a way to help providers of any more greater clarity, I'd say, from from uh, the governor's stance, which still remains at this point um, a bit indecisive of real clarity. And so markets still aggressively pricing for that December rate hike and further subsequent inclines thereafter in, in rates. Um, otherwise, just jumping elsewhere geopolitically, you might have read uh, a few headlines about um, Russia and Ukraine. So just to get up to speed on what exactly has been going on, this isn't really a a brand new thing. We've been commenting on it for a couple of weeks. It's just that the US have now shared intelligence, um, including maps with European allies that shows a buildup of Russian troops and artillery um, to prepare for a rapid large scale push into Ukraine from multiple locations if Vladimir Putin decides to invade, according to people familiar with the conversation. So uh, before the US were quite um, quite aggressive with their rhetoric with Russia in positioning itself more likely for further sanctioning. Um, and they had kind of splintered away from the Europe where Merkel was having actually talked directly with Putin. And we know Germany's dependency on gas flows coming from that region. Um, so now the US has come forward and just provided more more clarity and, and intel on the, on the matter is what this latest development is. Um, in terms of um, two sides, Putin and Biden. So Putin, he sees Ukraine as part of Russia, hence the kind of 2014, the annexation of Crimea and Russia and all the tensions that happened several years ago. And he does not like the outreach that Ukraine has had with the West, especially with military engagement with NATO. Uh, and on the flip side for Biden, the actions of, of Putin are kind of tricky on, on multiple fronts. For one, um, they're going to test his administration's appetite to intervene uh, militarily again in foreign affairs or foreign shores and if you think about it we've just had a very messy exit coming out of Afghanistan probably the last thing he needs uh, in terms of his political favorability which has been declining is to now jump into a Russia-Ukraine situation which really doesn't carry too great a sway with the American voter at the ballot at the ballot box um, Biden has to focus more, um, one would think from a strategy perspective, on political strengths on domestic priorities like his economic agenda, dealing with what's happening with rising gas prices for the consumer, um, things like that. And so, yeah, it's a tricky one again and just goes to show the multiple fronts that, that Biden's challenged with at the moment um, going forward. The other thing from the weekend then is the PBOC. I don't find this incredibly surprising at all, but... Uh, the latest being that we've had some communication out of the central bank where the Chinese have said they signal possible easing measures to aid the economy's recovery after a sharp recent um, downturn that we've had and also the impacts and sentiment from the property slump. Um, the thing that people are looking at from the comms from the central bank is the omission of key phrases, which basically is not saying they're going to do something, but the lack of talking about the way they're describing the economy in certain ways would suggest that potentially more easing is on the way. So something to just be aware of. As far as the uh, calendar is concerned for this week, uh, as I said, we do have Thanksgiving holiday in the US, meaning a shortened week. Um, a lot of the US data is concentrated on, on Wednesday. But before we get to the data, one of the things, of course, that we're looking out for is the end outcome of... Biden's decision. Does he go with Brainard or Powell? And so the latest here is that he's expected to reveal his nomination for Fed chair this week. Um, the latest reports would suggest an announcement is due before Thanksgiving. So no set day or time, just in the coming days, we're going to be looking out for this. And the likelihood is we'll get sources and rumors and things like that in the build up. So do be on the lookout. 
Uh, most accept that the choice is between just these two candidates. So there's really no one else uh, in the running. And Powell is tipped as the slight favorite as far as the betting odds are concerned at the moment. Um, analysts write that some Democrats have expressed concerns over the recent Fed investment disclosures. You remember there's been a really bad PR job for, for Powell himself and the Fed, given a number of uh, Federal Reserve officials have been seen to be taking out slightly dubious stock positions, let's say, or investment opportunities ahead of then major policy announcements, which is definitely uh, bad practice, to put it lightly. Uh, and that's that's impacted Powell's uh, credibility a little bit. And uh, there's also been quite a bit of talk about Powell's lack of green credentials, which is obviously a big part of the agenda for President Biden. Um, and those would be key considerations among more progressive Democrats. Uh, Powell's oversight of banks has also been cited as a bit of concern. Uh, Brainard is seen to be slightly tougher on that issue. Meanwhile, Brainard is seen as more dovish option which some lawmakers might find a little bit concerning, though, given the context of the economic climate right now, which is obviously rampant inflation in the US tracking at 6.2%, the highest in 31 years. So that's the trade-off a little bit. She might be deemed a little bit more tighter on the uh, regulatory front. He might look a little bit more equipped to deal with then uh, the current economic climate with inflation because of her more uh, kind of dovish disposition. Um, but at the same time, again, the, the green, credential element, green credential element is kind of not that she is, but he's, she's, he's probably lesser so in that sense. So that's what they're weighing up. And obviously it comes in the context of, well, we'll be keeping a close eye on Fed speak because at the end of last week we had Vice Chairman Richard Clarida. We've also had the Hawks. So like people like Waller and Bullard, they've all signaled the topic potentially at the next Fed meeting in December about um, accelerating tapering, given what we've just mentioned on inflation. Uh, and certainly at the moment, we've had rate rises being pulled in closer. We've had a number of big banks, JP, um, I think Citi, Credit Suisse, GS, they've all brought forward now their rate hike uh, kind of timing um, in terms of for next summer, generally speaking. Uh, and now there's some, been some more hawkish commentary as well coming from these Fed members. So we'll look out for more clarity of any speeches this week. Uh, but going back to the calendar then, Monday today is pretty quiet overall. It's not like too much going on. Uh, European flash consumer confidence figures coming out this afternoon. You've also got the German coalition report suggests over the weekend they could um, there could be an agreement to be obtained as early as today or tomorrow in terms of the formation of their coalition. I wouldn't be looking for any immediate intraday market reactions on the back of that though. Uh, but just, just so you're aware. Tuesday is kind of the main um, data point um, as far as Eurozone is concerned, but more broadly, we get the global, so Eurozone, France, Germany, UK, US market um, flash PMI data points for service and manufacturing uh, for the month of November. These are always potentially market moving. They unexpectedly showed improved growth momentum in October. And while analysts are expecting a bit of a deceleration in November, a positive surprise might feed into expectations on whether the Bank of England will increase interest rates in December, uh, which they're leaning towards at the moment. Um, also, you've got German flash GDP coming out uh, tomorrow morning as well. So on Wednesday, that's really where it's at as far as the scheduled calendar events are concerned. So RBNZ rate decision and German IFO aside, it's very much a stateside focus. Um, in the evening, we get the US FOMC minutes. They obviously could be quite interesting given the commencement of tapering we had at that November 3rd meeting. Uh, then we also get the PCE data, so kind of the preferred measure that the Fed like to look at to gauge inflationary conditions. So while US PC for October will be monitored for further signs of price pressures following the heightened CPI reading, uh, to remind you, PCE data reflects changes in household expenditures, a subsection of the data known as core PCE, which discounts the effects of volatility of food and energy sectors, is the one that's going to be particularly uh, closely scrutinized by the market when it comes out on, on Wednesday. On the same day as well, we also get... Um, GDP coming out of the US. Uh, you can see here US Q3 second estimate. So it's not the advanced, it's the preliminary reading. Uh, so potentially slightly less impactful than the first reading. Um, but analysts at ING are looking for a moderate, 
modest upward revision, but the October personal spending will be more significant as it can tell us a little bit more um, as to how the uh, kind of consumer is feeling in terms of personal spending going into the fourth quarter. Um, home sales numbers uh, are not expected to be uh, moved much on the month. That's also coming out at the same time. Uh, but the increase in home builder sentiment suggests buyer traffic is on the rise and that should lift housing activity into the new year. Uh, and then weekly US jobless claims. I know they're written down here on Thursday. They're actually coming out Wednesday. Uh, so that's a mistake on this calendar. Um, and, and everything will be coming out on that same day given the market closure that we'll see on Thursday. Uh, and then just skipping over to Friday, uh, pretty quiet overall. As I said, there'll be a shortened trading session as well in the US. So most traders typically um, stateside would just take off um, Friday and have the extended uh, run into the weekend. There's obviously a lot of travel that goes on uh, in North America through the Thanksgiving uh, weekend. So Friday could be quite quiet. You do have Bank of England Chief Economist Hugh Pill gives a speech on the economic outlook at the CBI. Could be of interest given uh, his more kind of hawkish commentary of late and as people look for more guidance on the potential for a deck uh, rate hike. Uh, so that is really it. So pretty slow calendar start to the day. Really the main action is going to really peak Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, the PMIs on Tuesday and that whole batch of US data coming on Wednesday uh, is, is what the, the look of the land is at the moment. Uh, but that is it. I'm going to leave it there. Um, any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and the channel. Be much appreciated and check out amplifyme.com. All right, take care. See you tomorrow.